orbiting... Daisy World is a simple planet. Like the Earth, it orbits a star, which, like our Sun, is getting progressively hotter with age. Unlike Earth, Daisy World has a very simple atmosphere, with no greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide to warm it up. And it only has two sets of inhabitants, black daisies and white daisies. The black daisies absorb incoming solar radiation, so they warm up. And as they warm up, they radiate heat, warming up their surrounding area. The white daisies, on the other hand, reflect the sunlight and stay cool. For both colours of daisies, 22.5 Celsius is the optimum temperature for growth. Now let's see what happens throughout the life cycle of Daisy World as things warm up. At first, Daisy World's young sun is cool and the planet is rather cold. And the heat absorbing black daisies are at an advantage. The black daisies proliferate and slowly spread out from the warmer equatorial regions until they cover most of Daisy World, turning it black. So Daisy World can absorb heat and warm up. As the temperature gets nearer the 22.5 Celsius optimum for all daisies, life gets easier for the white daisies, who then prosper. At first, they grow best at the warm equator. Then they slowly move out, finding a niche alongside the black daisies. But in areas of high solar radiation, the white daisies do best as they cool their environment. Whereas in areas of low solar radiation, black daisies predominate by warming their environment. In all areas, the numbers of black compared to white daisies depends on the proportion of heating or cooling necessary to maintain the optimum growth temperature. But Daisy World's sun is still getting hotter, and soon the black daisies find it hard to cope whilst the white ones stay cool. The white flowers soon outnumber the black ones, and Daisy World becomes whiter and whiter. The white planet can reflect the increasing solar radiation and stay cool, but the sun gets hotter still. Eventually, the planet gets too hot, and even the white daisies can't cope. Daisy World dies. 22.5 Celsius is the optimum growth temperature for both black and white daisies. The black daisies work with the sun and warm the planet. We call this positive feedback. White daisies work against the sun and cool the planet. We call this negative feedback. In Daisy World, we're concerned with the combined effects of both positive and negative feedback. This graph represents the temperature of Daisy World based on changes in solar luminosity alone, without the influence of the daisies. If we now add the daisies, we get this curve, which shows both positive feedback from the black daisies and negative feedback from the white ones. Together, they regulate the planet's temperature, producing a stable environment despite the changes in solar radiation. The Daisy World model is a very general one, and you can play all manner of games with it. So let's make it more realistic by giving the daisies a few problems. For example, we could introduce rabbits to feed on the daisies. At first, the rabbits would try to eat up all the daisies, but as the daisies became scarcer, the rabbits would starve. So the rabbit population would decline as a result. If then the daisy population recovers, this will be followed by a recovery in the rabbit population. This is another example of a positive and negative feedback system which balances out over time. So if the rabbit population fluctuates like this, the daisies correspond like this. 
During the population cycles, there appear to be runaway increases or decreases in the number of rabbits or daisies. But when measured over a long time, a balance or equilibrium has been achieved between the number of daisies growing and the number of rabbits supported by them. This balance means that the rabbits have little effect on the long-term well-being of Daisy World. The same long-term balance will eventually be achieved even if we introduce further biological perturbations. We could, for instance, introduce foxes to prey on the rabbits or a plague to kill off a high percentage of the daisies. Or competition between daisies of different colors. Or whatever perturbations we may care to invent. The effect of feedback is a zone of quite remarkable planetary temperature stability in the face of quite massive changes in solar radiation. As the output of the sun varies, so the black and white daisies simply respond to changing conditions. But in doing so, they regulate the temperature. The process is entirely automatic. It's just an emergent property of the system. <laughs>